Solving the Time and Money Challenge, episode 171. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and wow, is it getting exciting. We are two weeks away from our Law Firm Growth Summit, and we have some exciting, exciting, really super exciting announcements to make. So first of all, we recently released a playbook. Uh, we interviewed uh, a number of our speakers on their top uh uh, their top tips for law firms in 2021. And we've taken those answers and compiled them into a playbook, your 2021 playbook for law firm growth. And you can download that playbook absolutely for free by going to profitwithlaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook, profitwithlaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook. And we will link that up in the show notes for you. So you don't have to pull over to the side of the road or jump out of the shower and write that down. But you definitely want to jump over and download that. And, and when you download that playbook, you will be granted a free an absolutely free limited access pass to the upcoming law firm growth summit being held February 9th to the 11th. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this is because we originally were not intending to offer a free limited pass. Now, one of our sponsors uh, has stepped up to the plate and has basically paid for your seat. Uh, so our sponsor, Noda, by M&T Bank, um, has elevated their sponsorship uh, with us and they've basically backstopped these free passes that we could not afford to do otherwise. Um, and we, we're opening those up. So if you download the playbook, uh, we, we only have made 2,000 seats available in the limited pass. Now, the limited pass is not going to give you everything. It's going to give you access to the main stage. It's going to give you access to the vendor expo area. You're still not going to have access to the breakout sessions, hands-on workshops, uh, networking, um, there's a lot of things that you still might want to upgrade your pass to, but for those of you who have been on the fence, you're not sure whether you want to invest in those upgrades, you can now get access to the event absolutely free. All you got to do is download the playbook. You're automatically registered. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook, and you are in. Now, I'm just going to take a real quick moment and have a word from our sponsor, Law Funder. So uh, if this is your new first time listening to us, um, that's okay. Uh, you probably haven't heard of Law Funder before, but if you've been listening to us for a while, uh, you've heard this before. But I'm so excited about Law Funder. Uh, you know, the, one of the biggest challenges that I hear from law firm owners is all around that of how to... In, fix the cash flow problem. And the cash flow problem stems from a, to a problem on two different sides of the aisle. One is being able to close sales, being able to bring in new clients, and the other is being able to collect money from clients. Now, if you can fix both of those with one solution, wouldn't that be perfect? Wouldn't that really make your cash flow issues go away? That's why I love Law Funder because they have a solution that's going to help you close more sales. And at the same time, their solution is going to significantly and rapidly decrease the amount of time it takes to collect money from your clients. And that's because their payment system allows you to have monthly installments for your clients that you don't take the risk for. Basically, their system, the way it works is, is they work with the, the, the processing company that processes on the credit card. You go to, you go to a potential client and you say, hey, it's going to be $5,000 for this engagement, but we can give you four equal installments of $1,250 
and you don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to apply for credit or anything like that. It basically is going to take you, as long as you have a credit card that's got $5,000 of available credit on it, basically it's going to lock up those $5,000 of credit on the credit card. It's going to process the first $1,250 and then it'll release that $1,250 from the lock and it'll do that over the course of four months. And the, you, the law firm, gets paid immediately that for that $5,000. So yes, there are fees involved. Go to Law Funder to check it out. Um, lawfunder.com forward slash profit with law. Let them know you heard about Law Funder here on the podcast and they will take extra care of you. Um, you got to check this out because this is the perfect solution. You get paid up front. Somebody is can make the decision to work with you because they can now afford it. They can still get their miles or their cash back or whatever it is they get with their credit card and everybody wins, everybody's happy. So go check them out, lawfunder.com forward slash profit with law. Now, today's topic. I have been talking to, I've been interviewed on a bunch of podcasts over the last few weeks uh, on, on some Facebook live shows. Uh, basically, I'm doing the circuit because of the upcoming summit. And something that keeps coming up, and it comes up in my coaching calls, and it comes up with conversations that I have um, with people in general, the, the, the conundrum that law firm owners are faced with is the time and money conundrum. And I want to, I want to focus on that today. Now, time and money are two of the finite resources that we have, right? They're not infinite. We only have 168 hours in the week, and we only have as much money as there is in the bank account, right? So we have a finite resource, and it always seems like there is not enough of it. It always seems like we are out of time. It always seems like we are out of money. Why is that? How do we solve that? And, and, and more than that, if you look at how you operate, there is a tremendous amount of stress that is created by this feeling of not having enough time or by this feeling of not having enough money. And that level of stress can derail you from what you're trying to achieve. It can make you be unsuccessful. So how do we solve this? How do we go from being stressed out, not enough time, not enough money, to being stress-free and having as much time as we want and having as much money as we need. And that's what I want to talk about today. So if we want to solve this problem, then we need to, let's start with time. We need to start with the three things that I believe are going to allow you to completely gain control of your time and really leverage it and be able to use it properly. And those three are focus, maturity, and understanding. And I'm going to go into each one so that you can understand what I'm talking about. But those are like the buzzwords, right? Focus, maturity, and understanding. Let's start with focus. One of the biggest reasons why we are not productive with our time or not efficient with our time is because we lack focus. And you already are sitting there, you know, understanding where I'm going with this, nodding your head, because you know that there's a ton of time wasted when you're not focused on what you need to be doing, when you're not focused on an activity. And what happens is, is that when we lose focus, when we are not focused on something, we tend to whittle the time away. Now, sometimes we call it productive work. Like, for example, when you go to check your email, but you know that right now I probably shouldn't be checking my email, but I'm checking it because I don't know what to do next. So I'm going to go check my email or I'm going to go have a snack. or I'm going to get up and stretch. And I'm going to walk around because I'm not sure what I should do next. Now, getting up and stretching is important. Checking your email is important. All those things are important. I'm using examples of things that are important to demonstrate that those things can be done at the wrong time. Those things can be done in a way that makes you less efficient. So lack of focus is one of the key reasons why we are not efficient with our time, why we end up wasting time. 
Now, lack of focus is basically caused by three things. Number one, plan or lack thereof. And I focused on this on one of the podcast episodes. I talked about planning, um, and I have to look up the episode and and put it in the show notes. Um, but when I talked about planning, I talked about how when, once you know where you're going, once you have a concrete plan of where you're going, you can then map out into quarters what the goals are for that quarter that you need to achieve, what the project is, the major project is that you need to achieve. And then you can take that quarter and break it into months. And then you can take the months, break it into weeks. And then you know every week when I start the week, this is what I need to accomplish this week. That kind of planning where you know exactly what you need to do when you need to do it is going to allow you to be much more efficient. Imagine if you knew when you went into work this morning, you know that if I do this one thing, it will set me up to 10x my business by the end of the year. If I did this one thing today, it will set me up to 10x my business by the end of the year. What what would you do when you came into the office? When, when would you do that one thing? Would you do it first thing before you open your email, before you talk to any clients, before you even talk to any any staff? Or would you leave it for the end of the day or put it on your to-do list of, hey, maybe I'll get to this eventually today? If you truly believe that that one thing was that was going to move the needle for you, that was the activity that was going to make you successful, you would do it first and you would get it done. Because everything that we set out to do could be done. The reason that everything takes so long is because we get distracted and we get interrupted and we get torn in different directions. And then we don't get to the thing that we intended to get to in the first place. So if you truly believe that this is an integral part of your plan, you will get it done. And therefore, starting with the plan is the first step to maintaining your focus because once you believe in your plan, once you buy into it, once you know you've clearly defined what the steps are, you're now ready to win by just making sure that that's the first thing you do before you start your day. And it, it it's kind of one of those things that needs to be like a like a, a no um a no exceptions kind of thing, right? Um you're not going to skip uh, well, I'm gonna any example I could give. There's gonna be somebody who does that, right? If I, I was gonna say you're not gonna skip breakfast in the morning, right? But I'm sure that there's people who skip breakfast. You're not going to not get out of bed in the morning. Well, I'm sure that there are times that you just decide not to get out of bed. Um, but those are the examples that I want to give, right? There are certain givens that you're gonna do no matter what. Um, here, brushing teeth, right? Okay, maybe there's some people who don't brush their teeth. Ew right? But what every single person does after they wake up is they brush their teeth. So it's a given. That's part of what you do. You brush your teeth. So when you come into the office, the first thing that you do is that number one task that's on your plate that's going to move you towards your goal that you've planned out needs to be done. And then once you do that, then you start your work day. So maybe your workday doesn't start at 9 o'clock. Maybe it starts at 10 o'clock because from 9 to 10, you're doing your one thing. You're doing your task that's going to get you closer to your goal. So that's the plan. But then the plan is followed by organization. And organization means that you need to be organized. Having a plan is step number one. You know, one of my clients recently and if you're listening, you know who you are. I'm not saying your name. Don't worry. I'm not calling you out. Um, but I'm really, really pr proud of her because she made the plan. And then she found a system to organize that plan in a way that worked for her. Now, I promote the 90X planner. I tell people go to 90X plan, 90X, um, um, what is the... Uh, What's the URL? It's not 90xplanner.com. Um, well, whatever. The 90x planner, uh, 
I love that planner because it follows this exact thing of, you know, create a quarterly goal, break it down into months, break it down into weeks, and then create your daily activities. So I, I like using the 90X planner. Um, but she doesn't. And she didn't have a system to keep organized to make sure that she was staying on top of her goals. She came up with the system where she had a single sheet of paper and she had the entire uh, 90 days mapped out, the entire three months mapped out. And then she broke it down and, and therefore she knew going into the week what she needed to do. It was very clear to her the way that it was laid out on the paper. She was organized and she is going to kill it. She's going to crush it. You know why? Because every day she's going to start with the task that she needs to start with. So the plan was the first thing, but then being organized, being having a way of be, of knowing what the plan is easily when you come in in the morning, when you start your day, that's the next step. That's really important. And then the last step is integrity. And this is going to be one that some people have a hard time wrapping their minds around. But integrity means that you are true to your word. And this means, you know, usually when we think of the word integrity, we think of being true to other people, right? If I might make a commitment to you, then I need to show up for that commitment. And if I don't, then I lack integrity, right? But integrity also means with yourself. If you make a commitment to yourself, if you make a promise to yourself, if you decide you're going to do something and then you don't do it, you lack integrity, and we, we don't necessarily think of it that way analytically, but inside, we know it. Inside, we know that we have not stuck to our word, that we've deviated from it. And that's often what derails people on a diet, you know, they, because we play this mind game with ourselves, because once you lack integrity, you can find all the excuses in the world to not, to not continue the good habit or the good thing. So when it comes to focus, it requires integrity. It requires you to be committed to yourself enough that you will maintain that focus, that you will take the action necessary to maintain that focus. So the first pillar in solving the time problem is to solve the focus problem. And if you solve the focus problem, you're going to be well on your way to becoming time free because why why am i calling it time free well because if you're super clear on what you need to get done and you prioritize that you do that first what's going to happen is is you're going to get really clear on whether or not you need help whether or not you need somebody else on staff to do certain tasks because as soon as you start to get organized and you start to plan your day out properly and you start to get really efficient with what you're doing, and by the way, when you do this for one thing, it's going to lead to doing it to the next thing. You're going to you're gonna see that one little bit of organization and integrity and planning in your life is going to make everything else fall into place. But it's going to also open your eyes to where you need help, not from, uh, oh my gosh, I'm working 80 hours a week point of view, but I've completely organized myself. I know I'm being efficient and I still have these things that I'm not going to get to. And therefore they're important. I need somebody to do them. So I'm going to hire an assistant or I'm going to hire a paralegal or I'm going to hire an attorney to do those things. But if you do this from the other way around, I'm frazzled, I'm burnt out, I'm working to the bone, and I think that I need help, and then you hire somebody, that person's going to be just as frazzled and just as disorganized as you are, and you're not going to solve the problem. So ultimately, to get more time in the week, we need to leverage ourselves. We need to bring on other people, bring on other staff or contractors to do some of the work so that we're not doing everything. But without a plan and without organization and without integrity, you can't possibly make that decision and make that hire in an efficient manner. So the first step to solving the time problem is focus. The second step to solving the time problem is maturity. 
Now, why is maturity important and what the heck am I talking about with maturity? When I say maturity, what I'm referring to is your ability to say no. Now, a, a immature adults who have children end up raising spoiled brats. Mature adults who understand how to say no and raise children, and they use the word no in their vocabulary when they're talking to their children and saying, no, you can't have that. No, you can't do this. Now, I'm not saying say no all the time. That's not what I'm trying to say, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Those kids who heard no from their parents occasionally, maybe frequently, they turn out to be okay. Because the value of no is so much more than the value of yes. Now, what happens in the in the workplace, what happens in, in when you're working is that there are lots of forces around you that are going to try to get your attention. Your clients are going to try to get your attention. Your staff members are going to try to get your attention. Karma is going to try to get your attention. You have to have the ability to say no to create boundaries around your schedule and around your work that you need to do and around your office you have to create boundaries where you are able to put your foot down and say, no, I'm not doing that. A client wants you to do something. You have to have the ability to say, no, maybe not. No, I'm not doing that. But no, I'm not doing that right now because you decided that I need to do it right now. I will do that for you, but I will do it on my schedule. I will do it when it's convenient for me or when I have time for it and your lack of planning, your sudden emergency that's come up is not my emergency. Now, there are times that an emergency comes up or an urgent matter comes up and you do need to drop things to do that, to take care of it. But you, again, that's the whole point of maturity is that you have the ability to say no. It doesn't mean that you're saying no all the time. It means that you're using no to create the boundaries necessary. Now, you also need to have the ability to make good decisions in the face of adversity. Now, what I mean by this is that there is always going to be challenges that you're faced with. There's always going to be things that come up that deviate from your plan that we talked about in the focus section. There's always going to be things that that arise. And you need to be able to understand what that challenge really means and to weigh your options and to make a good decision around that challenge that you're overcoming. And if you are not good at making those decisions, if you don't approach it from a mature perspective, you have knee-jerk reactions, you you do things uh, that are on a whim to react to that challenge, then chances are that you're going to have a lot of wasted time with that challenge. You you know, if you always feel like you're running from fire to fire to put things out, you're constantly putting out fires in your office and in your, you know, in your work life, chances are your personal life is just the same. Uh, then that is stemming from a lack of maturity because it, those fires are being created by you. Now, it may not feel that way and it may not seem that way, but if you're in a perpetual state of urgency, that is happening because you're not making good decisions on the front end. And these are the, the eventual um, payoffs or paydays for that um, for that adversity that you're that that you're facing from those bad decisions that you made now the last thing that and this is kind of more like a hint of of like a little trick that you can do to make better decisions um with maturity is to ask yourself what would so and so do now so and so needs to be somebody that you look up to that you think is brilliant that you think is has got everything figured out that you think is you know the somebody that you really think is a role model for you 
And then you need to start asking yourself this question whenever anything comes up and you say, what would that person do? And when you ask yourself that question, it becomes a very powerful question because you already know what the person you look up to would do. And therefore, you already know what you should do. It's just a matter of framing the question the right way. So if you're having challenge, if you're being challenged by not ha- not making good decisions, start getting in the habit of asking yourself that question, what would so and so do? Now, the third pillar or the third thing that will help you get control of your time and become a time ninja and really be able to spend time with your loved ones and the things you love to do and not have to spend it all in the office um, is understanding. Now, understanding is is deep. It's it's you know it moves away from focus was was very analytically made sense right maturity made sense. Understanding is going to be something that may not make sense at the beginning, but basically you need to understand yourself. And a lot of people struggle with this. A lot of people don't really don't really look within and have an understanding of how they tick. And what I mean by this is, what are your limitations? What are the things that you suck at, that you just don't do well? What motivates you? How do you, when you're under the gun to get something done, how do you make sure that you get it done? What is the what is the thing that drives you? You know, for for me, one of the things that one of my limitations is that I love food, and this has nothing to do with work. And I'm just giving a, a a personal life example where I can show you what it means to really understand yourself. One of my limitations is that I love food, and I love food to the extent that when I'm eating something that I like. I feel the need to eat all of the supply of that food that's available to me. So like if I go out to eat in a restaurant, I feel like I need to finish every last morsel of the food on my plate. I can't pack it up and take it home. And it doesn't make any sense, right? Because I know that I really, I'm enjoying the food. I really like it. So if I packed it up and brought it home, in theory, I should have double the enjoyment. I enjoyed it in the restaurant and then I brought it home and I enjoyed it at home the next day for another meal. So analytically, and you know, it makes sense that I should leave it over. But I know this is a limitation of mine. It's a limitation because it's not healthy. It's not good for me to do this is that I feel like I need to finish it. Now, I don't know where that comes from. Maybe there's some deep rooted psychological reason that that happens. But if I want to lose weight or if I want to get control of my health and I I just try I just say hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be care I'm going to watch what I eat. I'm only going to eat healthy. Well, then I can go to the restaurant and I can order brown rice and grilled chicken and 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 steamed vegetables. And they can bring out this massive plate filled with that stuff on it. And I could devour that entire plate and say, oh, I ate healthy. But the reality is, is that my portion control was not good. I still ate way too much food. And therefore, no matter how healthy the food is, if you eat enough quantity, you're still not going to solve the problem if you're struggling with weight or you're or you're trying to be healthy. So. I know that this is a limitation of mine. And therefore, when I want to focus on my health, I need to I need to to do it in spite of that limitation. Right. I need to recognize that I have to overcome that limitation to solve that problem. So now what motivates you is the is the other question that I said. And and for for me, what motivates me when it comes to my health is not wanting to have to buy the next size clothing. Um, it you know it's not so much how I look, and it's more about my pants won't close or my shirt 
when I put it on just looks awful because I'm wearing the wrong size shirt. And when that happens, that's when I get motivated to eat healthy again for a while and to go on the on the Peloton and to do, you know, go out for a run and do all these things. And then when I fit nicely into my clothes again, I lose my motivation because that's what motivates me. And it shouldn't be that way. I should have other motivations. And that's a you know whole nother conversation. Um, you know, I'm airing my dirty laundry about my health, my, my health habits here when it comes to exercise and eating. But the idea is, is that you need to really understand, uh, you know, we're trained to work against deadlines. When we go to school, we get homework. The homework is due by a certain date. Uh, we have to bring it in by the due date. We have a project. We have to do it by the date. We have a test. We have to study before the test. We're basically raised to operate off of deadlines. And then we wonder why when we have something that we need to get done by a certain date that we can procrastinate for weeks and not finish it. And then all of a sudden we get to two days before the deadline or the day before the deadline and we're able to do what should have taken us what we had six weeks eight weeks to do suddenly we're able to finish it in a few hours how is that possible because you need to understand yourself you need to understand what your limitations are and you need to understand what motivates you you weren't motivated until you had the deadline in front of you so if deadlines motivate you then you need to place deadlines on yourself. You need to make things due before they're due so that you can harness that and you can, and you can act on that. So we've gone through and we've outlined focus, maturity, and understanding are the solutions to the time problem. And I'm going to, we're going to jump into the money problem in just a moment, but I want to take a moment and just share with you one more time, Law Funder, one of our sponsors. Let me share this exciting tool. Um, I told you about it earlier, but let me tell you another spin here. The 2020 Legal Trends Report published by Clio rates how important various items are in a client choosing your firm. Now, you might be surprised to know that the third most important decision factor for someone choosing a lawyer is the ability to pay with a payment plan. And by the way, it's right after the ability for you to provide discounts to the client. And do you know that the number one reason why attorneys apply discounts is because they think the client won't be able to pay their bill? So whether you're providing payment plans or whether you are discounting unnecessarily, payment plans is the answer to getting rid of discounts. And it's making the customer happy. It's making the client happy. That's what they want. So the challenge that law firm owners face is the risk of a client not making good on that payment plan. If you ever tried to offer payment plans on your own, then you know that you have to hope the client finishes paying the payment plan before you finish the legal work. Otherwise, they may never pay their bill because they've got what they needed. And it's unfortunate that that's how people operate, but that's just the way it is. So Law Funder has found the solution to that problem, and they have a system where they allow you to easily add a payment option to all your client invoices and retainer replenishment requests that doesn't require a credit check. It doesn't require an application. doesn't require any other complex process. The client's able to use their existing credit cards, which allows them to earn points, miles, and access credit card specials on interest rates and any other tools that they use to manage their cash. Essentially, we're allowing them to continue to manage their cash the way that they want while getting their legal services in a way that's affordable to them. And most importantly, it removes all the risk from the law firm and makes it an easy and painless process for the payment process. So if you want to really um, simplify the um, the life of your client and and your life and your firm get rid of your accounts receivable once and for all offer payment plans and you will see that when 
you start offering payment plans, you will suddenly see six months later that your accounts receivable has dwindled to almost nothing. The only reason accounts receivables grow is because of lousy systems regarding payment collections. And this way, it's already in place. LawFunder takes care of all that for you. You don't have to worry about collecting from the client because it will automatically process that payment. You will have already received it. So when you put somebody on a payment plan with LawFunder, you get paid up front for the entire amount. And then LawFunder goes and takes out the, that charge from their credit card every month over the period of the payment plan. So go to LawFunder.com forward slash profit with law. And that's LawFundAR.com dot com forward slash profit with law. Now, back to our show. We talked about time and now we're going to talk about money. And you may think that we're halfway through the show. You may be looking at your clock and saying, oh my gosh, we're 35 minutes into this episode. Now I got another 30 minutes. We're going to talk about money. Let me tell you something. The solution to money is exactly the same as the solution to time. And therefore, we're going to run through it in just a few minutes. So um, the solution to time, we said, was focus, maturity, and understanding. So let's go through this in the, with money in mind instead. And the reason that this works so well is because any finite resource can be solved this way. So money problems get solved when you focus. When you have a plan of where's the money going to come from and where's the money going to go, then, of course, you're going to end up with that result. If you don't have a plan and you're just kind of winging it, then, yes, money's going to disappear regularly. Money's not going to come in when you need it. It's going to come in whenever it feels like it because you don't have a plan around it. Uh, organization. Uh, I am a profit-first professional. I tout the profit-first system. But the reason the profit-first system is so successful is because it is organized. It's because the money comes into one account, and then you take a predetermined percentage, and you put it into another account. So you put 15% of all revenue into a tax account, and suddenly there's no surprises when it comes time to pay your taxes because You've already put it away. It's already earmarked for that. It's put in a bank account for that. And guess what? You can pay it. So um, having an organized system around how you handle the money is going to solve cash flow problems. And then integrity is so important, right? You need to be truthful with yourself. If you set up a system that says, hey, we're going to not spend more than 30% of our revenue on operating expenses, and then you something comes up and you have an opportunity to pay for something that you think is going to enhance your firm, but it's going to put you over that 30% threshold, then it's your integrity on the line. You need to be able to say, no, I'm not going to do this because it is outside of the scope of what I'm willing to spend for my operating expenses. If I, if I spend money on this, it means that I'm going to bring home less to my family. It means that I'm going to not have enough money to pay my taxes. You understand how this works, right? So um, it all fits very nicely. Focus, plan, organization, integrity. Maturity. We just mentioned it a moment ago, ability to say no. You have to be able to say no to certain expenses. You have to be able to say no to bad clients who are not going to pay their bill. Just don't serve them in the first place. And then it won't create a money problem when you, you're not getting paid. Um, speaking of which, we just told you about Law Funder. It's a perfect segue there, right? Um, your ability to make good decisions in the face of adversity, right? Um, some people, when they're cash tight, they make even worse cash, cash decisions. Um, you know, you may, you may borrow money at a high interest rate. You may, uh, you may put money on a credit card that you, it, you know, that then opens up the, the, the avenue for, uh, getting into the situation where you have too many payments to make. You're serving, servicing too many credit cards that you just can't keep up. And what would X do? What would this person, what would so-and-so do? You can ask this question easily when it comes to managing money. What would so-and-so do? Would they make this expense? Would they make this investment? Would they 
would they take on this client? Would they would they take this client to court to collect money from them? Would they say yes or no to moving forward with trying to get this retainer replenishment? And finally, understanding. You need to understand yourself. You need to know what your limitations are. You need to know what motivates you. You know, uh, we all have a tendency inside of us to either be frugal or spendthrift. You know, you, you need to know what you are. You need to know, am I somebody who likes to spend money and who spends money easily? Or am I somebody who's a tightwad and doesn't like to spend money at all? Both of those are not good. Both of those are not good. You know, somebody who's a tightwad is not going to make good decisions when it comes to growing their business. Because they're going to have to hire people. They're going to have to invest in technology. They're going to have to do these things if they want to grow. And therefore, their growth is going to be stunted by the fact that they are they have this aversion to spending money. And then somebody who's a spendthrift, somebody who likes to spend money, is going to buy a bunch of stuff they don't need. And therefore, their expenses will be too high. They won't be able to bring enough money home. And you see where this goes. So you need to understand yourself. You need to know what your limitations are. You need to know what motivates you. And therefore, you need to know how to overcome that. So that basically sums up how to solve the time problem and how to solve the focus problem, which brings us to one last point. And the last point is when you have the culmination of all of these things, it creates clarity. But at the same time, this is a chicken and the egg problem because clarity is what creates your ability to be able to solve the time and money problem. So it's kind of like, okay, well, does clarity come after I solved it or does clarity come before I solved it? And the answer is, is that it's kind of both. You need a certain amount of clarity in order to start to tackle the time and the money problem. You need to have a general idea of, you know, where's my business going? What is my business plan? You know, what is the model that I'm using? How am I getting clients? What's my marketing strategy? What's my, what's my selling strategy? How am I pricing my services? What, you know, at, do I want to grow? Do I, am I, am I planning to grow a large staff or am I just going to get the bare minimum to be able to to handle the, the, the small caseload that I, that I want to handle in order to be able to spend time with my family, earn a decent living, and be done with it? Or am I growing into a 20-person firm? Having that kind of clarity on the front end allows you to then do your planning, to then do your organization, to then stick to your word to yourself be in, and be and ha, be in integrity to say no to things that don't don't meet that criteria and so on and so forth you understand where i'm going with that, this right so how do you get that initial clarity how do you navigate and figure out which you know what do i take what which is the right thing which is the right marketing effort which is the right sales mechanism which is the right way to handle onboarding of staff Well, the good news is that we are going to be spending three days taking you on a journey, navigating how to get that clarity, how to keep that clarity. And that's coming up at the Law Firm Growth Summit, February 9th to the 11th. And you can get an absolutely free limited pass by simply going and downloading our 2021 playbook that has the number one tip for lawyers in 2021 from a whole bunch of our speakers. So you definitely want to go to ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook. ProfitWithLaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook. Download the playbook. Get your free limited pass to the event and don't miss it. We, We are going to spend three days helping you navigate and get clear on what is where what is the key areas that you need to focus on over the course of the next 12 to 18 to 24 months to get to the goal that you want. Whatever that goal is, whether it's double your revenue, double your profits, 10x your revenue, 10x your profits. One of the cool uh, titles of sessions that we have is David Neagle is going to be doing a talk on how to turn your annual income into your monthly income. And I absolutely love that. 
I mean, imagine if your annual income is $200,000, how would you like to make that your monthly income, all right? Or if your annual income is $50,000, how would you like to make that your monthly income? Or if your annual income is a million dollars, how would you like to make that your monthly income? There's no end to that exercise, right? So I, I can't wait for his keynote address discussing that. There's a whole bunch of others that I can't wait for. I'm, I'm really super excited. Uh, you can check out more at lawfirmgrowsummit.com, lawfirmgrowsummit.com. But if you want to download the playbook uh, and get instant access to those top tips from our uh, speakers and at, that are going to be gracing our stage, then you want to go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash 2021 dash playbook and let us help you get the clarity that you so desperately need so that you can start to harness and control your time and your money and eliminate a ton of stress in the process. Hopefully this was information that's helpful to you. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, definitely hit the subscribe button so that you get notified every time we release a new episode. We're here a minimum of twice a week and I will catch you on Thursday. Uh, If you've been listening to us for a while and you're enjoying the show, do me a favor. There's two things you can do to help me. Number one, share this episode with somebody else who you think can benefit from it. The more people that share this episode, the more people that are listening to this show, the more people that we're helping in the process. And number two, we need ratings and reviews. Go to your podcast player and just click the the rate the show button, rate, write a review. It's different in each one, but Find the place to write a review and simply give us a number of stars and write a review. People are coming and checking the show out. They want to know if they should listen. And we need your help to tell them, yes, this is a show worth listening to. So with that, I'm going to go enjoy your week. And I am looking forward to our uh, our guest interview coming up on Thursday. Take care. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level.